Welcome to Lake Cumberland Amateur Radio Association. You can find us at lcara.net, on Facebook, on YouTube, and on Instagram. If you're enjoying the videos we're producing here at Elcara, please help our club out by hitting that subscribe button. Also, give us some feedback on our videos. Click the like button, share with anybody who may find it interesting, and be sure and hit the bell icon to make sure you get notified of the next video release. Hello folks, this is Chris, KY4CKP, and uh, this uh, fairly simple on the bench video for El Cara uh, is um, just going to go over the, the portable battery box uh, that I built uh, several years ago, uh, actually before I even got into amateur radio, uh, five, six years ago, and uh, we talked about uh, uh, mobile uh, power options in one of our very first videos. Uh, we'll have a card linking to that here in this video. and. Uh, I was upgrading, uh, replacing the battery in my vehicle, uh, actually with the same thing uh, you'll see here. And uh, even though this battery was still in pretty good shape, I could probably have used this battery uh, at least another probably year or two. But uh, it's been about five years. And uh, with the travel that I do for work and, and then using radios, uh, HF and UHF, VHF radios in the, in the car and, and getting into parks on the air and those things, I just wanted to make sure I had a good, strong battery. I didn't want to tax uh, an aging battery with those activities. So I decided to replace it. I decided to get the same battery again. I've, I've liked it. It's worked well. It has good reviews and, and that kind of stuff. Uh, and uh, we're going to get into the actual battery here in just a few minutes. But uh, I just thought it would be a good opportunity to, uh, to try to put together a fairly short video just kind of talking about sort of the features of this battery box that I put together. Uh, again, originally just for camping and, and things like that. And just talk about some of the capabilities that it has. And there's a, a, an infinite <laughs> number of ways that you could put one of these together. People have been doing these for a lot of years. And that's uh, one thing that got me inspired to, uh, to do one. And, uh, but I did take sort of some shortcuts in a sense. Now, the first thing I did is I went ahead and bought a battery box that had some features built in. This is one of the Minn Kota uh, trolling uh, battery uh, centers. Um, and I, I did this for a couple of reasons. I could have kind of bought a very simple battery box, uh, Walmart, everybody sells them, and those are not very expensive, and I could have added a lot of these features to this, but the Minn Kota sort of gave me a leg up. Um, you know, I could have done some relatively simple work, but I would have had to buy, you know, a meter or two and this and that and terminals and, and put some labor into it, and I don't mind doing some of that kind of stuff, but uh, I took a leg up with the Minn Kota. Um, it's not that expensive. It has uh, the wiring pre-built in, has a simple battery meter, and uh, uh, it has the uh, a fuse built in. It has two 12-volt accessory, one on each end, and then the uh, heavy lugs uh, that you can see on the outside. So you can charge it and, and that kind of stuff, and you don't have to take the battery out of the box or open the box uh, just for charging activities or anything like that. So I just kind of took the leg up. It's got a nice handle built in. It's got the strap to help keep the lid on and the... Uh, entry and exit ports again on each end for cabling and stuff as you'll see I use some of those for the power inverter that I bolted to the side of this so it gave me a leg up on the project uh, you could certainly do one of these more from scratch and add uh, meters or other things in there that you might want to have and then for the inverter uh, again not real expensive I went with a little best tech uh, 400 watt 1000 watt uh, peak uh, you know, at the time, this was one of the, the smallest, most compact inverters, has good rating, and, uh, and it was going to serve my needs. Two uh, regular 110 uh, type outlets and two USB charging ports. And the thing I liked about this inverter, uh, one, it was a nice small form factor, but it has the raw lugs, the raw terminal lugs, just like the battery box does. So I could use heavy duty cabling to connect this to the battery in the battery box. It didn't have kind of a regular. Uh, car adapter, you know, plug. I could have cut that and, and modified uh, something like that with some of the other units, but this one was just going to be a little easier to work with. So that's what I went ahead and went with here. Now this is not pure sine wave. I may upgrade to a pure sine wave later. Uh, I may convert this box to using LiPo 4 batteries later, but we'll talk about the current battery I am using with this in the next segment. Okay, so in this segment we're going to talk about the battery a little bit. Uh, the previous battery was a good battery. Uh, a little bit smaller than this, a little bit smaller capacity, um, but it had just gotten older and, and wasn't able to really um, hold a full charge or maintain a full charge, and the, the uh, power tended to leak out of it fairly quickly. 
So uh, since I was ready to upgrade my car battery, and it was uh, this dual purpose type battery, I just figured I could kind of kill two birds with one stone there, get a new battery for the car, and uh, swap in this battery into this battery box so I could get uh, a little better utility out of the battery box. So this is the X2 Power. Uh, this is a uh, BCI Group 34 size battery. It's AGM, glass mat battery, you know, sort of maintenance free. And it has the dual terminals, not that I've ever really needed that per se, but it had the dual terminals. And uh, the, the reason I got this battery for the car originally, and, uh, and, and got another one in fact, and, and I'm happy to put this in the battery box, it's a dual purpose battery. Now, regardless of the advertising, I know that dual purpose batteries are not going to be the, the most perfect best example of either type of battery, a starting battery or a deep cycle battery. But this appears to be a pretty good quality battery, it's highly rated, and I think it does a pretty good job at either one of those features. It certainly has done a great job at starting for me all these years, and the new one is doing a good job as well, and I think it'll do a reasonable job at, at being a deep cycle. Uh, and I already had this, and I needed something for the car. Now, if I were just buying a battery purely for this box, I would probably get just a, a deep cycle battery. In fact, that's what I had in it before. Uh, just a smaller size, about 50 amp hours in the previous battery. This one's rated at about 68 amp hours, a little bigger form factor, a little bigger size, a little more weight to it, of course. But uh, uh, it's going to work well, I think, in this situation. And I didn't really have to buy anything for this application. I bought it for my vehicle application and just swapped into it. Uh, and it'll work good enough for this this capability. Again, if you're buying something dedicated for this type of use, you'd probably go with, with even maybe golf cart batteries or just a good deep cycle uh, type battery. So one of the other things uh, that we're showing in some of these pictures is um, the previous battery had screw terminals and they were of a size that happened to fit the ring terminals that the, the Minn Kota battery box came with. This one has regular uh, terminal posts. And so I bought these no tools required uh, battery terminals that have the uh, friction lever that you can fall down just to make it easy. I can uh, screw the ring terminals to these and then easily attach these to the posts on a, on a regular type battery like this. So, uh, and those weren't very expensive, seven or eight dollars. It makes it very easy to uh, to work with this. And if I ever did uh, end up replacing with a, a battery or something in the future, or wanted to take this battery out of the box for some activities. Again, the Minn Kota battery box makes uh, most of this pretty simple. It already came with some heavy, uh, pretty heavy duty cabling, and I bought some heavy duty cables to attach the, the lug terminals on that power inverter, uh, you know, bringing them, routing them into the box, attaching to the battery as well. And we'll see a close up of that picture uh, here coming up. Um, you know, they just connected in nice and easy, and then that, that friction fit uh, clamping system for these, uh, these terminals makes it easy to connect to a regular ter uh, terminal on the battery. So uh, it's all very easy. Uh, wasn't very expensive, and again, the, the Minn Kota, it works well. You could build your own box. A lot of folks were doing that and still do that. I've seen all kinds of things put together out of ammo cans and other types of containers. Uh, I just went this route, again, years ago, and I've got a newer lithium-ion portable box. We talked about it in the earlier video as well, and I'll probably get something live po 4 at some point, or even kind of convert this over to live po 4 so here's the the uh, sort of internal cabling, the uh, the box cabling, and then the inverter cabling that'll come up through one of the entry ports over to the side. Uh, all nice heavy duty cabling, and uh, it works out well. And I've also got the uh, the high tech uh, organically 3D printed uh, insulator over there to make sure the battery doesn't come into contact with the bolts holding on the power inverter, uh, aka wood block. <laughs> but uh, you know works works uh, cheap and simple to uh, give me some insulation over there. All right, and uh, in this segment, we're just going to talk about the uh, power inverter just a little bit. A little Best Tech uh, 400 watt uh, inverter, uh, dual outlets. Um, I think all, total it has four USB uh, um, plugs. Uh, certainly two of those, uh, 2.4 amps each, so they're they're uh, relatively high speed uh, charging capability there. Again, one of the things I liked about this little unit, it was small. It was going to fit my uh, application well, and it had the uh, the lug terminals. So I could do nice heavy-duty cabling into the uh, into over to the battery. Uh, a lot of these kinds of solutions don't. Again, they would have had maybe a regular power plug or car car adapter, 12 volt adapter plug or something, and, and you could cut those off and 
and make a modification. But uh, with this one, I just didn't have to. Uh, again, it's not pure sine wave. Uh, it is a modified sine wave, uh, which is okay for most of what I do. Uh, I, I was looking the other day. There are some uh, some smaller pure sine wave inverters available today. There wasn't really much of anything when I put this together originally. They they were out there. They were just you know bigger form factors and things, and they're going to cost more money. A, uh, a pure sine wave that would fit this application would probably be at least two or three times the cost. Uh, so if you really want that, it's out there. You can get that. And I may upgrade to one of those here before for too long, um, maybe later this year. But I haven't really needed it. This would get me through um, most of the situations I, I might typically find myself in. Again, camping situations or maybe uh, field deployments now in, in amateur radio or something like that. So it's worked well. It's not really expensive. Again, highly rated. It's always a nice thing. Uh, you can certainly look those up, uh, you know, on Amazon or someplace, or or research one uh, one that you would like to use on your own, of course. And uh, we're just going to show here the inside of the battery box. Uh, I just use some bolts, basically some simple bolts, and uh, may trim those up a little bit in the future. But uh, I've just always used some kind of a of a an insulator uh, on the inside with whatever kind of battery I was using. The last battery was a little smaller, so I actually had a couple of of uh, space uh, space uh, blocks uh, to uh, to help it keep from shifting around too much and, and again to to make sure it couldn't come into contact with these uh, the, these uh, screws. Uh, I've still got the the one piece of wood in there now because this battery's a little bit bigger. Don't need to. Uh, and then we're just going to start wrapping this up, folks. Um, something like this, whether you want to put something together, whether you want to buy solutions, the the market for completely ready-made solutions is so much better today, so much bigger. There's so many more options today. Uh, even the uh, the lithium ion uh, that we uh, talked about in the um, the first portable power video that we did, um, you know, when I bought that unit a few years ago, there weren't as many options. Today, there's there's just you know thousands, hundreds or, or thousands of options, any price point, different kinds of battery technologies, uh, lithium polymer, LifePo4 lithium iron polymer. Tends to be uh, about the best new battery technology. A lot of things are going that route. Uh, form factors and connectivity types, output levels. Um, you, you've got a lot of choices, whether you're going to build something or whether you want to buy something pre-made. Um, if you like to be really hands-on, building something is still a very viable way to go, uh, even if you are going to get uh, you know, a, a lithium type uh, of battery solution. Again, I may convert this over to something like that in the future, and and, and then that might become another uh, little on the bench video or something. So I just want to kind of go over this since I, I kind of had it out and um, and was swapping the battery. I thought, hey, you know, well, let's just talk about this a little bit. We we mentioned these solutions in the earlier video. We didn't really get into them. So again, it has a little meter on the top. It's not super accurate, I'm sure, but helps give you an idea. You know how you're doing with your battery. It's got the uh, the reset uh, on the circuit and then the uh, has the fuse in there and you could add additional fusing uh, in places if you needed it but that's pretty much it and uh, we just wanted to uh, kind of go over this and um, share a little bit of deeper information on this uh, again maybe as an inspiration to folks again whether you would like to go ahead and build your own solution or um, or buy a solution uh, again that's that was part of the original video was just to give folks an idea of some of the kinds of, of things that are out there um, you know, and we talked in a video about solar panels, uh, different ways of charging, whether you have a generator, whether you're able to charge things on your mains power at home before you go on your trip, uh, you know, we have a generator in the field, solar panels in the field, uh, those kinds of things as well. So that's pretty much it. I uh, just thought we'd put this together and share this uh, with folks. So this is uh, Chris, KY4CKP for Lake Cumberland Amateur Radio Association, 73.